صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Alhamdulillah, in the past 10 nights, we finished with the regulations, ahkam, and laws of fasting. Although it was very comprehensive, many of those were not said because either they were not, you know, applicable or the majority of brothers and sisters already aware of them. Therefore, we did not say them. We just only chose the important ones. And from today, from tonight, we will be starting about the regulations and ahkam of the prayers. Again, my dear sisters, please, my humble request is put up with me for 45 minutes and inshallah, I will be done in 45 minutes. It is really important that you pay attention to these words. So, the prayers of brothers and sisters, we dedicated one whole hour to speak about the importance of and significance of salat, of a prayer. And we have narrated across many of the narrations of the Imams and Masumin, Thawbos, regarding the importance of the prayers. For example, one of the narrators, he asked the Imam and I guess the Imam al again, he told him, Tell me what are the cardinal sins, the big sins that a Muslim commits. The Imam, peace be upon him, said, and yes, no, Allah, number one is becoming hopeless from the mercy of God. If a Muslim kills, you know, an individual innocently without any justification. If someone, you know, be a disgrace with his parents. Those are all considered to be cardinal sins. The man asked him, told him, what about some, someone who does not do the prayers? Ta'ala was salat. Look at the answer of the Imam. The Imam السلام, told me, told him, سألتني عن الكبائر التي يفعلها المسلم. You told me a Muslim does some, something like this. Someone who does not perform his prayers in the eyes of Imam is not a Muslim. He said, وَتَعَلْقُ الصَّلَاةِ كَافِرُ There's no difference between the non-Muslim in the street and this guy who does not perform the prayers. It is exactly the same thing. We have this narration from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Says, بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَالْكُفْرُ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ there is a single line between us and being blasphemous, and that is the abandoning of the prayers. That much importance God has given to the, the prayers. And therefore, we will be talking about the prayers, inshallah, until the end of Ramadan, because it's, you know, it's a lot, many, many of them, and fortunately, there are people who are faithful. They do their prayers, they do their fastings, they are very committed, yet they don't know the regulations. They still don't know the true way of performing the prayers. You see, if a single prayer God would accept from us, us, we should be happy. One, a single prayer throughout our life, if two and a have been accepted, we will be victorious. We will be, you know, in a good shape. Only one prayer. So imagine how many of those prayers go this way and that way and go astray without being accepted. The acceptance, if you remember last time, we said that it is two things. One, it is the soul should pay attention to the prayer, and second, it is the form which includes the clothes of the Musalli, the articulation, the body, the qibla, and the rest of those things. And those pertain to Akkam, and inshallah we will continue with them. Now, the kind of prayers. Of course, we have the wajibat, the mandatory prayers, and we have the mustahabat. Mustahabat are, mashallah, plenty. Hundreds, maybe, hundreds of kinds of prayers. There is no room to mention them here. But the wajibat, we have seven kinds, or eight kinds, it depends on how you look at it. 
seven kinds of mandatory prayers that God has mandated those prayers. Number one is our daily prayers. The five daily prayers that we perform among this daily prayer is Salatul Jum'ah. You see, Salatul Jum'ah is not a mustahab, brothers and sisters. It is called Wajib Ikhtiari, meaning it is mandatory but by choice. What, what time it becomes mandatory? During the time of an Imam al Mahdi. Um, that time it becomes mandatory. But before that, it is not a complete mandatory. You are between Salat al Dhuhr or Friday prayer. So, Friday prayers is considered to be one of those daily prayers. So, number one is a daily prayer. Number two is the makeup for a daily prayer. Meaning, if you make, you know, you were absent minded, you slept for Salat al Fajr, for example, you get up, you do the makeup as Abba. So, Ada and Qawa. Those are number two. Number three, the makeup of the prayers of the parents. If you remember when we talked about the fasting, if the parents miss prayers, it is mandatory for the oldest son and his oldest son alone. He has to make up for the prayers that have been missed by his parents. Either he himself does them, or he finds someone, pays him to do one, or he and his family, the rest of people do him. But it is on his shoulder. This is a burden on our shoulders that we pay to perform the prayers that have been missed by our parents. So this is number three. Number four, Salatul Mayit. It is the prayer for the deceased. Someone passed away. You have to perform the prayer for that. But if one person does the prayer, of course, there is no need for the rest to do that. It is called Wajibun Kafa'i. Meaning one will be enough. So those are number four. Number five, it's a prayer to fulfill the net, the pledge. Someone makes an end. If God gives him such thing or does so for him, then he performs a two and a half prayers or multiple ta'at of a prayers. This is also considered to be wajib once someone chooses that. And the, uh, the other prayer, number five or number six, I guess. Number six prayer, Salatul Tawaf. When you go to Hajj, inshallah, when you perform the circle around the Kaaba, when you finish that, you have to do Salatul Tawaf behind the Maqam, behind the monuments of Prahim. It is two Ka'ab, you have to do that. That's number six. And number seven, Salatul Ayat. Salatul Ayat is done in times of, for example, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, those are done at that time. Or during the earthquake, if there is an earthquake, if there is a hurricane, anything that is considered terrifying to the average people. Maybe someone, you know, is not terrified by anything, yet it becomes wild for them. During typhoons, hurricanes, you know, volcanoes, those all require Salatul Ayat. So that's also number seven. And the daily mustahabbat, we have also nawafil. Nawafil for the, you know, for each mandatory prayer, you have a few of of nawafil. Just quickly, we will go over them. For example, morning prayer, Salat al has two ruqah of nawafil. Salat al dhuhr and Asr has each have eight ruqah of nawafil. Salat al Madr has four rak'ah of nawafil. And Salat al Asha has two rak'ah of nawafil, but you do it while you are sitting. That will constitute a one rak'ah. Either you want to do it stand up, one rak'ah, or two rak'ah while you are sitting. Now look at the features of Mu'mineen. We have a narration from Al Imam al Hassan al Askiri that says, Alamat al Mu'min khams. The features, the attributes of Mu'min are five things. Salat al Ihda wa Khamsin. The prayers of 51 raka'ah. What are 51 raka'ah? 17 raka'ah are the mandatory prayers. 
23 rak'ahs are the nawafil for those prayers. And plus 11 rak'ah of salat to the When you put them all together, they become 51. So one feature of mu'min is salat to ihda wa khamsin. Wa ziyar to the arba'in. Pay the salutation to Imam Hussain on the 40th. Wa tafattumu bil yameen. Put your ring in your right hand. Wa ta'afiru li jadeen. The forehead to be wiped on the ground or anything that is made from the earth, from land, you know, that is soil or dust. Those are five things. So,